at least things have stayed interesting. We offer our prayers to the Dark Lady, whose comfort and grace heals all. With haste. We offer our pain to the Lady of Loss, that she may truly know her faithful. We offer ourselves to the darkness, that Blessed Shah may give us her mercy. I wonder what's past this. Might be useful. What's up for discussion? <laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. by trade when I see one. <laughs> Tell me, what ballad bold enough to lift me onto the pedestal of acclaim enjoys your musical predilection? Is that so? The lyrics are by Volo. You know, whose name alone is sufficient enough criterion to arbitrate its acclaim to truth. Two weeks I had to endure a frozen beard and wicked frostbites. Yet he makes it sound like a dalliance through the dales. Yes, yes, yes. Be that as it may, you said you came all this way on my behalf, did you not? For what purpose? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Bordity washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. 
Surely you won't begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get... get out with it? Oh, for the love of... Uh, well, this way then? Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh, nigh on 13 centuries old and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow and see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. Wise choice. Better to indulge your curiosity than Elminster's appetite. Mm, yes, what a delightful wedge of old Elf Turian that was. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savored so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Uh, right. Um, you see, I, um, um, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can. For swearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Oh, Mistra's delicate feet are ill-suited for the hardships of the road. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider... forgiveness? She would consider... what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the Absolute, that most insidious of evils. of my presence in a roundabout sort of way. You must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. 
You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky-strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion. Be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. A wizard doesn't reach Elminster's age without enjoying their home comforts. Those who seek danger over cheese don't tend to live as long. For Mistra to have sent him, the severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. I can't believe Mistra actually expects Gale to just 
sacrifice himself like that. Seems like a waste of a fine mind. Very serious of you, but go ahead. I won't pretend that I don't know what you mean. Ever since we entered the Shadow Curse, I felt like something's calling to me. Some purpose that I need to find. Give me some time. If I can figure out whatever it is that I need to do, well, then there should be more time for us. Gail's granddad. Wonder if he's a wizard too. He's certainly got the beardliness for it. Why'd he come all this way to track us down? He's got a... Well, I guess that would explain a little, but... Mistra? <laughs> I mean, this is a lot to take in. What's he going to do? Well, tell him to pick the right one. Well, better yet, I'll do it. <sighs> Fucking wizards, man. They always need help picking the simple, obvious option. If Mistra can't think of another way to stop the Absolute than sacrificing Gale, she's no god worth worshipping. I'll say that to Gale in, you know, gentle terms. Sounds boring. Oh, fine. I'll be here eating dirt or whatever. Elminster. Even the Githyanki have heard tell of the Sage of Shadowdale. Some of his works have been translated to Tisu. That doesn't mean his every word carries wisdom, however. Near as I can tell, Mistra demands Gale's faith, but holds no faith in him. Why else would she demand Gale sacrifice himself, and perhaps so many others? Does she not think he can destroy the Absolute with his own immense talents? Does she not know the mighty company that he keeps? Demanding Vlakith may be, but she acts for the good of the Githyanki people. Mistra is concerned only for herself. Bah. Perhaps he'd find forgiveness in a fiery death. But I can't help but wonder why he'd want it at all. It is done. Assume nothing.
Scratch's tail wags enthusiastically. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster. No one stopped me yet. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? There's something I need to say. Something important. Can you spare a moment? First a parasite prods at our heads, then the shadows close in. More than ever, we need each other's trust. And I fear I've been less than honest. You're incredibly kind, but you earned the right to hear this long ago. The man I call father is Older Ravenguard, a Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate. Grand Duke Ravenguard, one of Baldur's Gate's most influential and beloved figures. Every Baldurian knows his name. I should have said sooner, but our relation was no matter of pride, not least for him. You heard right. My father and I were close once upon a time, until he disowned me and cast me out of Baldur's Gate. I can't tell you more. The pact forbids it. My lips are quite literally sealed. The inevitable consequence of inseparable events. You still deserve to know. There is more to me than infernal power and pacts. My story is one of two men. The Blade of Frontiers. A man hunting the fiends who prey on the weak and claw at the coast. And Will Ravenguard. A memory of a memory. A man who belongs to the past. I wanted you to know the Blade, not the shadow he left behind. Not so enchanting as you'd think. The poor tears, the cold wells, they were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets. Father's the son of a blacksmith, born with barely a coin in the coffers. He made a name for himself among the flaming fist, brave as Balderan, stubborn as a deep rofe, daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. I spent more time dueling with father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and the talent for courtly dance.
Yes and no. Father taught me the four pillars of power. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. He reckoned I'd follow in his footsteps. First as a fist marshal, then as a duke. Vanquish evil, maintain order, save the world. But a duke makes bedfellows with more monsters than he slays. Father called it diplomacy. I called it hypocrisy. In the frontiers, there is no posturing, no diplomacy. I slay monsters, I don't consort with them. Even if I might look like one. You're keeping well, friend. Time's over, pet. Ah, oh, I love this time of year. The dickheads start popping up wherever you look. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil. And a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers, and you're getting him out. <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. Should promised soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the pact holder shall cast the promised into a vernus as a lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to Avernus. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Mazora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Interesting. Now, why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash?
You recall an old incantation from a children's story, said to void a devil's contract. Abi diabole et numquam ready. such a fearless display of sheer idiocy. Bravo! <laughs> Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done, not before. Clause F, Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearer's fulfillment of related obligation. Now, to Moonrise, pet. And do you mind the shadows? They've been especially hungry. Seems like a good moment to talk. This dark land must be filled with the broken, the beaten, the desperate, the perfect praying ground for a devil who offers a way out for those who sign on the dotted line. I hope we end up seeing our friend Raphael down here somewhere. Help me find him, and you'll find out. When I was taken to his house, I was caught off guard. But now, now I know what to ask for. Perfect! I knew you would understand. Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zariel? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets. What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? forget what Will did. Not ever. I'm here because of him. And I'd do just about anything to help him. But devils never lose. You know that, right? Sure, they'll give you a bit of tat here and there. But the house always wins. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the blade stands for. Such an asshole. The same thought crossed my mind. I'm only to hunt the infernal, the demonic, and the heartless. But nowhere was it stated that I can't help one. Either we find it, 
or I made a mindless blob clawing at demons on the front line of the blood war. It means everything to me. I always knew what my future held, and I know I chose right. <clears throat> Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it. But I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. I can feel Mazora scheming, plotting. She won't let me go without making a fuss. Trust me on that. brings to mind a story. The Devil with the Silver Tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales, don't you think? Refuse him, no matter how tempting the offer, no matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you, the cost will be too great. That's because you still have hope. But when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you only what you're least ready to part with, and then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure, but the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. The voice of the Absolute is strong here, and getting stronger. I don't know how much longer I can resist it. But it's good to see you're making progress. You took an unexpected route here. You did a brave thing. Saving those people in the grove. Not everyone would have helped. It just doesn't stop. We are being bombarded by waves of telepathic energy. Wave after wave with hardly a breath between them. I almost dare not rest. Each wave a set of orders to the infected. The order for your transformation has been given many times already. I just hope my powers last long enough to see this through.
The dog is unable to speak through the small bag he holds in his mouth. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. All I know is I thought of you when I saw it. inside. An entire domain ensconced in Shadow Curse. That's quite the enchantment. Those shadows. There's power coursing through them. Oddly familiar. Better stay on alert. I know the dark of Worlds Base, but I've never known a dark like this. Darkness or not, we need to reach Moonrise Towers. Step. <laughs> 